my name is Stu Harris and I am the lead architect for the IT asset management group uh, part of the automation technology squad at ITES partners and wanted to do a little video to talk about some of the differences between data in Alteris from data from inventory which is most commonly associated with client management suite and data that is asset data associated with asset management suite so data that is inventory that data is gathered by the semantic management agent with basic inventory and some of it is even gathered with an inventory solution plugin and that's the more specific data and this is computer data so asset management can seem kind of mysterious when you're mostly used to client management suite and you haven't had a lot of experience with asset management suite and we get a lot of questions like what happens when I retire a computer so during this video I want to talk about that specific question and kind of explain some of the differences between the data from client management suite or the inventory data and the asset data so let's go ahead and look at some of the data that we have so first off on the left hand side we have what is inventory data and I've got it broken down you can see basic inventory data and this is not everything this is just a summary and you have some hardware inventory and then we can see some software inventory on the right hand side we have a sample of what you would see for asset data so again the inventory side we're gonna see this information by looking at resource manager and this is again on a computer this includes a desktop a laptop or a server so this data is again it's captured by the semantic management agent or the inventory solution plugin so let's look at some of the, the one of the differences first off the asset data you're gonna see gathered or you're gonna see it on the edit screen and that is normally gathered manually or through a data import of some sort um, data imports I'm not going to cover on this video we will have another video that will cover data imports and basic basic use of that tool so let's take a look at the data itself we have some fields that look like they're going to match so the host name and an asset name those are usually going to match up and I'll explain that in just a couple minutes we see we've got manufacturer which is an exact match on both sides model and serial number those are all exact matches on both sides so if we look we've got a great opportunity to get some accurate data from inventory and put it into our asset and this data is always going to be fresh it's always going to be accurate because it's gathered by an agent that's running an inventory on the computer this data is actually moved over to this asset data by a task it's a system task under the CMDB tasks that's called inventory to asset sync and this will take the host name put it into the asset name field it'll take manufacturer model and serial number and fill in now there's a caveat to this is if we have manufacturer and model data if somebody goes in and edits the asset to inventory sync will not fill in where there's already data it'll only fill in blank fields there is a way around that um, we, we use something called a CMDB rule to populate data if it's maybe been typed differently than what the inventory sees like for example uh, an HP computer could be shown as HP it could be Hewlett Packard it could be Hewlett Packard Inc depending on how it's added in it may not match what the inventory is going to pick up which is what the manufacturer burns into the uh, to the machine so in that case we would use something called a CMDB rule to change that we're going to do another video on CMDB rules um, this won't be one of the examples but it could that could be something that you could use a CMDB rule for so let me kind of move on so in a reporting sense one of the other questions that we hear a lot especially when looking at asset management is why isn't my data accurate well we have to understand that the hardware data comes from a different place than the asset data and again if these values on the asset side they are editable if somebody goes in and changes the name 
or changes something then you're going to have a different value in inventory than you will on the asset side. If the asset to invent, I'm sorry, inventory to asset sync task is not running, you're also going to see some missing data. So if the report you're looking at is looking at asset data and you go in and look in resource manager and say, "Well, I can see a manufacturer model, why don't I see it on this asset report?" Check to see if that at inventory to asset sync task is running. Uh, the next thing we're going to look at is I'm going to go into the console itself and we're going to take a look at um, we're going to take a look at both resource manager and edit and then we're going to talk about what happens when we retire. Okay, so we have in front of us I have the uh, 7.6 Altiers console. You may see some things that are different from what you're used to. Um, again, this is 7.6. If you have 7.5, you're not going to see everything that's on the screen, but I'm going to just go to a computer here, and I've already got this open, but I want to pull up the menu anyway. I've got a right-click menu option, both for Resource Manager and for Edit. And I'm going to go ahead and pull up Resource Manager first. So we can see this is all data that's gathered, and this, again, is from that left side of the screen. I can see the agent details. I can see which plugins are here. I can see some network details. I can see applications that are installed. I see both hardware and software data here. And again, this is inventory data. If I were to click the edit screen, and I've kind of shrunk this a little bit to hide some of the custom fields I have, uh, this is going to show things like the asset status, whether it's purchased or leased. It shows the barcode on the computer if there's any assets associated to it. And this data is on the right hand side of that T-square. So now that we've seen these two pieces, and actually let me go ahead and just jump down, because we've got a, here's our manufacturer and our serial number fields. Now that we've seen those, let's take a look at the tasks that are involved. So first is the inventory to asset synchronization. There's an include and an exclude filter. If you leave those blank, it'll just do everything. And then as you have computers with empty spaces in the asset data that will this task will fill those in so what happens when I retire a computer so let's go back here to the edit screen and I'm gonna go all the way back up to the top if I change this status to retired first of all if I right-click a computer and use the option to retire a computer what it does is it changes this status to retired now that kind of sets off a chain reaction should everything be enabled and the reason I say should it be enabled is there's a task called inventory cleanup that I do not have scheduled if this job is scheduled when it finds a computer that is in that retired state or status of disposed or returned to lessor any of those computers are going to lose their inventory data by inventory data again I'm going to pull up my little t-square here Inventory data is, again, this left-hand side of the square. This is the basic inventory, the hardware inventory, and the software inventory. What you will keep is the data here on the right side. You will keep the name of the asset, which again should be the host name. You'll keep the status, which we know as retired or whatever status we leave it at. We will keep the manufacturer model serial number, barcode, location, owner. We'll keep lease information. If you put in any cost information, that will stay. So what happens when we retire a machine? Well, what's going to happen is, again, this data leaves. With this data going away, you're going to lose the basic inventory, which is going to take away any of the Altiris plug-in data. What that's going to do is free up the Altiris license being used by this computer. Now, also you're going to lose the software inventory. That's going to free up, if you're using software licensing, that's going to free up one of your installs from this particular computer that we're retiring or from every computer that you retire. So if you have a certain number of computers running an application, say, say Microsoft Visio, if you retire a computer that has Visio on it, and then you run the inventory cleanup task, and let me jump back over here again. If you run that inventory cleanup task, you're going to free up a license or harvest the license 
that you wouldn't normally need to have because the computer's been retired. So this information that we're leaving behind, and again, I'm going to pull up the T-square one more time, this inventory data that we're leaving behind is all data that's gathered by the agent. We're going to keep the asset data, and that's important because we're going to have a permanent record that this machine existed. Hopefully, we're going to have a record of its safe and proper disposal or send being sent back to the lessor as a proper best practice for asset. So that's that's the uh, really the long and the short of retiring a computer. And again, this is the difference between the inventory data from client management suite and the asset data from asset management suite. I thank you for your time and please watch our webpage for more asset videos.